Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to The Foundry. You're watching the episode 8 review of more of The Mandalorian, the finale episode, Redemption. Uh, a lot happened this episode, but I'm joined by Ken and Sly today. How are we doing, guys? Doing great. I'm so excited for the last episode. It's phenomenal. Um, it's good. It's great. You guys are going to love it. <laughs> yes. So uh, a lot happened last episode. Our main protagonists are in a bit of a doozy. Um, so... Where does this episode start us off at, boys? <laughs> we begin with the two scout troopers who snatched up our baby Yoda. Yes, so dastardly, and they they killed off Ug our our favorite little Ugnot. <laughs> uh, so they sad. killed Kuil. What a dick! <laughs> yeah. Those bitches. Although I can't believe they shot him. Like that took actual skill to shoot him and it not took baby accuracy. Yoda. Something and they, they were lacked. on speeder bikes, and he was moving like. How? I don't understand. Stormtroopers are never that accurate. Also, that's a little... Yeah, that is... And especially because we had which, the scene... Which we see. Yeah, we had the scene of them, like, target practice some something on the ground, and they can't hit like shit. Like a tin can. So, inconsistency, we're giving this episode a 0 out of 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dude, right from the get-go, awful. <laughs> Just automatic 0 me. to start off. Yeah, but these these two they, stormtroopers or scout troopers are amazing. They were my highlight of the episode, honestly. Phenomenal. They were oh so fun. The banter between these three characters just was just class. And it's some they 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 reference something that I always think about in in film and TV is when when a villain kills their own troops, you know, they just don't care. So they make the 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 response are like they have Baby Yoda, which is which is great. They got the package, and they're trying to contact Moff Gideon. And they're they're talking to uh, a radio guy in town. They're like, "Hey, we got the package. Are you ready for us to come in?" And they're like, "Uh, yeah, not really. Some stuff's going down." And and it's he's just, monologuing. Yeah, he's he's monologuing. <laughs> he, he just killed about fourteen of our guys, and he just killed the boss as well. So you might want to wait a minute. And they're just like, "Dang, I can't believe he killed fourteen of our own guys." They're like, this is the guy you want to work for, everybody. I'm like, what the. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Boss of the year. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. But then uh, they're checking on the baby, and he's like, did you see it? And he's like, no, nah, man, I grabbed it and stuffed it in my sack. I didn't look at it. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps Are you crying. sure it's alive? He keeps hitting him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that is so funny. He just, like, smacks little baby He Yoda. totally slaps him up, I tell you. And then he's like, you know, it's been quiet for a while. We should check and see if that's alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because and... one of them just really wants to see it. Yeah, he's yeah. like he just wants to see what the what little just wants to see what the package looks like. His curiosity <laughs> is getting the better of him. And then yeah, just was some f hilarious banter between those two characters. And one of them was played by Jason Sudeikis, which is kind of funny. You know, like a nice little nice little thing because just like how uh, Tom Hardy was a stormtrooper uh, in The Last Jedi, right? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then sh who guess who shows up? Our little nurse buddy to save the day. After, you know, Baby Yoda gets a right hook to the face. And he's yeah. like, my maternal instincts have kicked in. And he <laughs> goes and kills him. Yeah. Oh, it was freaking great. IG Hand Levin. over the baby. Yeah, IG-11 shows up and he uh, he takes care of business. Takes out those nerds. Curb stomps one of them. <laughs> he he literally him bashed his head in on the bike. I was like, what is this? Yeah, he was not fucking around. IG-11, he was programmed pretty damn well. R.I.P. Ugnot. But, uh, Rip. yeah, so we go back to the town and Moff Gideon, he's doing his little monologue. He says, hey, you will have until nightfall until we're going to, like, just blow this, like, building to pieces. We're just going to mow it down. Yeah. It's gonna look yeah, they like... place an e-web. They put down the turret. Yeah, they got a turret there and they're going to oh, yeah. turn that building to The three of them start cheese. panicking. Yeah, they're like, we need a way out ASAP. So they're like, we yeah. can go down to the sewers, but there's a grate. It's too powerful. We can't break it. You know, but ah, and then we get the backstory on two of the characters that we have been missing. Yes, apparently our our infamous war criminal here, uh, Moff Gideon, he has got some background information. He calls them all, all three of them out, calls them by their names. Even the Mandalorian, uh, Dejarin, is that his name? Din Jaren. Din Jaren. Yeah, they call my his first a, name. If he's a uh, what do you call it uh, species, a Gungan, it's Din Din yes. Jaren. So. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, <laughs> it's confirmed. This episode, he is not a Gungan, though, Sly. 
confirmed. He's not. I know. I know. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> so we can put we can put those theories to rest, and unfortunately, those helps Damn it. as well. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> he just takes the helmet off. <laughs> Misa, die. <laughs> <laughs> Misa die now. Yeah. IG Eleven just slowly puts the helmet back on and walks away from <laughs> Misa the <de> way. <laughs> oh, okay. Back to where we were. We, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. jumping around a bit. Uh, uh, Din Djarin has a total flashback scene because he addresses to Grief Karga. He's like, "You're a Mandalorian," and then uh, Cara Dune is like, "Mandalorian isn't a species." Yeah, it's a way. And then it. that's when he's like. You know, he has that, like, total Vietnam moment where he's like, I remember it. And they show him as a kid the full scene that he keeps having these flashbacks, that PTSD with the hammer and the droids. And lo and behold, who rescued him from the droids? Death Watch. Oh, so we have an actual confirmed name character? Death Watch is from the Clone Wars. Death Watch was the Mandalorian group of, oh, like, that was... rebels and renegades. That was... Oh, I didn't know that was them in the actual show. Yes, that logo on their shoulder was the sign of uh, Prey Vizsla, House of Vizsla. Oh, so as dope. soon as I saw that like eagle looking like scattered, I was like, oh my god. Plus the blue armor, that was their depiction of it. So he got rescued by Death Watch, which is like the outcast Mandalorian group, and they raised him. Which Damn. was dope. That adds... Oh. That's, that adds to it, because I actually didn't realize that myself. I didn't know that. That's um, awesome. The Star Wars fan I am. It's because I haven't I haven't caught up on those series. I feel bad. But that's really cool. John's getting there. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm rewatching almost. I think I'm on season two. But anyways, yeah, nice catch there, Sly. Um, Thank you. That's really interesting that they would be willing to adopt him, and like, and yet they're so like hardcore about their Mandalorian religion <laughs> and stuff like that, which is yeah. weird. Yeah. I guess um, it's because he was young enough. It's like the Jedi. If they start young enough, they're fine. Yeah, they can mold them. <laughs> they, I didn't catch that. That's a good point. Damn, Ken. <laughs> I don't There's know. Star Wars Maybe. Man. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, so we get the full scene, and we can, uh, get a backstory about the other characters, about Grief and uh, Cara Dune as well. And he just kind of outs them and says, Moff Gideon is just saying, I know who you are. And... Apparently, Moff Gideon, everyone thought that he was dead. Uh, yeah, that executed was... for his war crimes, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly, but apparently that's not the case. And mm -hmm. uh, Mandalorian confirms that it's him. And he's like, they're kind of screwed. They realize, like, we don't really, we can't really do anything. And then, mm -hmm. um, did IG-11 hit that place that then they attacked? Or they just decided, like, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. And like oh, no, they no. decided I do. they're trying to like get through that sewer grate, but then like a bunch of blaster fire starts kicking in and they're like, What is that? <laughs> and then we just get like a montage of IG eleven decimating the town. Oh yeah, with baby baby Yoda in tow, like on his back. He's just like spinning around shooting guys <laughs> on the speeder bike going like And he's smiling the whole time. Yeah, a little oh, reckless. Dude. A little reckless, especially <laughs> when you're trying to keep that child safe. Like IG eleven, you did a fantastic job too. Yeah. yeah. He, he I mean he's essentially the what started that whole fight in in the beginning cuz like he him really going there got them to come out of, you know, yeah. the canteen essentially to start fighting as well. And you get some crazy stormtroopers. You get like there was like flame troopers like at one point. Like that's it's a little later on in the fight, but like yeah. they come out and they start trying to you know take care of business and that's pretty intimidating <laughs> yeah they had the uh they definitely brought out the heavy guns for that, that for that fight yep speaking of heavy guns din Djarin steps up to the plate when he sees them getting overrun and picks up the e-web yeah that was impressive i was like gatling gun oh, yeah. moment dude what is this <laughs> yeah and uh he takes a pretty nasty shot from uh, moff gideon who does something very uh, realistic i guess you could say yeah, he, um, and so the Mando's out of action, and they, uh, fortunately have, they got to retreat back to the bar, and, uh, fortunately, fortunately, everyone's alive, but Mandalorian's, like, heavily infestated, so they kind of decided to, uh, well, let's just, uh, let's just leave him here, you know, we're gonna leave the Mando here, because he, he can't, uh, he can't make it out, and, um, May the war is death. Yeah, though they break open the grate, head down to the sewer. Uh, IG-11 stays behind to try to uh, heal him up best of his ability. 
but he can't do so until he takes off his helmet. And uh, you know, Mandalorians, they he refuses to let him take his helmet off, and so we just uh, we had a little conversation between the two. Like, no living thing can see my face, and he's like, hit him, bam. IG Eleven's like, I'm not living, son. I'm a goddamn robot. And Mandalorian's like, all right, pop that shit off and fucking give me that, uh, give me that Bacta right now. Give me that good, good. Yeah, and he, just, <laughs> he spit that Bacta right at him, and you saw Fix Pedro. my central processing unit. <laughs> I love that. That was hilarious. Like, that that, was, that was a yeah. joke yeah. meant yeah. to calm you. <laughs> good bedside oh, manner. But you forgot the best part. Right before, I think it's right before that, right? The, the flame troopers, yes, that I was talking about. They come Bro. storming in. This one comes in, he's like about to, well, he already starts flaming the whole place. He torched the place up. And like, he was about to like go right at the Mandalorian with the flamethrower. But then Baby Yoda steps up to the plate and just, again, boss, and uses the force to push the all of the fire back and kill the, the freaking flame trooper. Just, yeah, he blew it was up nuts. the flame trooper. <laughs> it was nuts. It, yeah. was, it was so cool, though. It was awesome to see. <laughs> I appreciate him getting tired and falling down on his butt. Just like, hmm. Oh, yeah. He gets tuckered out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> uh. yeah it, was a, it was a crazy fight. I, I, I like that episode so much, and I'm glad we got to see Petro Pascal's face. He was looking rough, too, when they popped that helmet off. Yeah, finally. he was. Yeah, he was going through it for sure. Um, you know what? But they made it down to the sewers. Uh, Cara Dune was... She was ecstatic to see him still alive. And she's like, take True. the baby. Give me my man. <laughs> <laughs> mm, ship it. Ship it. Hold yeah. On. Ship it. <laughs> yeah, she was... She she got really close to him. They had uh, quite the like friendship. She was like, I'll carry him. You carry the baby. That Beskar can handle those thighs, man. I know it can. <laughs> And then, uh, mm. so they make it down, they're looking for the Mandalorians, and, uh, they stumble upon a, a large pile of armor pieces and just metal on the ground, and all these pieces of metal are, have the Mandalorian insignia on there, and it hits the Mandalorian that, uh, they've been wiped out once again, purged for yeah. the second time, and, um, it's rough. yeah, he, he kind of just looks down, he's just, you can just feel the the sadness there. And he quickly yeah. turns towards Grief Card with his blaster. He's like, "You did this. You sent your bounty hunters." Yeah. It. Uh, it oh yeah. Sucked. He was pissed. Yeah. Yeah, because they pretty much sacrificed and allowed themselves to come out of hiding. You know, just to get yeah. the Mandalorian off the planet. You know. So he's probably got that like guilt, guilt that you know, sure. his decision to rescue baby yoda cost his clan or his tribe so to speak yeah and then we get a return of another i personally one of my favorite characters that's really like a side character it's it, it, it she adds a nice flair to it the armorer she returns mm -hmm. yeah she uh we got the, our little blacksmith who made the beskar steel for mandalorian before uh she's there and she hooks up the mandalorian Gives him his uh, gives him his wings, so to say. Um, <laughs> so sh um, he's got his little jetpack now. And have you ever? Sh what'd she say? Like, have you have you trained in the ways of the Phoenix or something? Yes. And he's like a little bit, which was yeah. dope. And right when she said that, I'm like, he's getting his dang jetpack now. He's getting mm -hmm. some wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What episode it was when he was like, I need to get me one of those. <laughs> episode three. Yeah. yeah when he was yeah. leaving the planet with Baby Yada. So it was good. Yeah. Oh, and not to mention, he gets a few goodies from her, to be honest. They restock on munitions, and then she addresses the the baby. Mm -hmm. And pretty much, I'd say she set the tone for the plot of the second season. For sure. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. She gave him his new main quest. Uh, she told Din Djarin, you need to find this creature's home and return him to his kind. So... Because of that, he became officially, uh, you know, step papa to uh, Baby Yoda, and he finally earned his signet. Yeah, yeah. He finally got. Uh, she made it up for him, which was kind of like it was a little random for me because they're just kind of like on the run, being chased down by like <laughs> loads of stormtroopers, like, yeah. and they had this like really like nice touching moment 
of meeting back up and stuff and being sad, but then some uplifting spirits, and it's just like, come on, we gotta go! <laughs> like She's very calm, though, so I mean, I, I get that vibe. <laughs> she kind of just slowed down the episode. She's like, patience, IG, guard the door. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but that uh, Signet, maybe I was the only one. Did it not look like the Mudhorn? Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, I'm, they, it was they, so I'm pretty sure they said that. Because yeah. she said, you are a clan of two, but I was like, I swear to God, that's the mud horn. That's... Oh, yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, because ah. that's mm -hmm. the one he refused at the beginning because he had help killing it. But yeah. now that they're like, like, you're bound you together. Story, yeah, it's like yeah. now it makes sense. It has more meaning now. Praise. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Yeah, so they decided that uh, they're just going to take uh, a little boat in the lava river, uh, head on out, and uh, I'm assuming you want you want to talk about the, our little beefy robot friend on the boat, don't you, Slay? Please, beefy <laughs> robot gives me nightmares, man. Oh, boy. So what nightmare <laughs> yeah. do these characters mean? <laughs> they, uh, they get on the boat, and much like any other gondola, you know, you've always got some dude who's, what, a gondolier, the pilot of the boat. He's got his big stick that he's, you know, moving the boat with. He's rowing. And... Yeah, he's rowing, just you know, peacefully down the lava lake. Emerges like a seven-foot astromech droid with arms and legs, <laughs> and I'm like, what? Is this? But it's like, it's like the body of like a typical R two D two droid, but it's got arms and legs. It's weird. It was like a like cross I between I G and like body. astromech. Yeah, as soon as I saw him light up, I was like, this is okay. You know, it's just an R two unit or an R four unit. No big deal. Stands up. I'm like, oh, what in the Towering actual? Towering <laughs> above all the other characters. Yeah, even IG 11s looking up like, oh, what? <laughs> Did not expect what? this. Yeah, it was it was just a little funny to see him. And so they start they start going down the river, and uh, they realize that on the other side of the tunnel, because they're underground, and the tunnel leading out. Uh, Outside, they realize that there was just a ton of stormtroopers that were waiting for them. And they're like, well, there's no way that we're going to be able to make it out alive. And we get a character to make a noble sacrifice. Uh, please try not to tear up Sly. But uh, IG-11 decides that uh, he will go on ahead and he will detonate himself in order to fulfill his uh, protection duty. Because if he's not able to protect... Uh, Baby Yoda, then he is to self-destruct, and he might as well... I didn't really understand the logic, but... It's I actually... Know. Well, it, it, it didn't make sense logically, I yeah. agree, and I actually commented on myself, but thematically, it's very interesting, because in the first episode, he's like, I gotta blow up because I'm not gonna complete my mission. I gotta blow up because I'm not gonna complete the mission. And then he, he blows he up has to blow up to because he cannot mission. risk his yeah. technology being tampered with. I know That's why. Like I know why he has to, but it's... Yeah, yeah I, know, I know why, but... Out of all the things, yeah. like, that got reprogrammed, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know if he can reprogram that. That's a good point, but maybe. Because, obviously, he remembered his original programming. To after. some extent, yeah. Yeah, because he said, you know, my programming is now to nurse. He's like, what about your manufacturer protocol? And he's like, that doesn't overwrite this. And we get a touching, heartfelt moment between Din Djarin, who usually has all this scorn for droids talking ig11 and he's like no 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 no. we can all make it out of here just you know pick up a blaster and he's like no we can't <laughs> yeah yeah it was kind of nice so he makes his noble sacrifice kills off a bunch of stormtroopers on the outside and uh the fight's not over yet we got a we got a fighter um <laughs> as a little tie fighter uh moff gideon is on the prowl so they make it out on the boat, and there's Moff Gideon in the fighter. He's trying to shoot him down. You know, he's getting a little close to close and, uh, with the shots. But uh, Mando, he's got his pimped out new gear, right? Yeah, oh, takes yeah. Takes a test drive. I, that whole scene, like, it was really cool to watch. But, like, I was imagining myself in that scenario. Like, he, he goes up. And I was thinking, okay, he'll just go up and, like, get close and shoot it. But then he grapples to the ship and just, like, is towed along. I'm like, dude, that thing's going so fast. You would, like, throw up so hard. <laughs> the armorer explained it. Oh, the, did she? The armorer explained the plot hole. I originally thought that, but after watching the episode a second time, I realized the armorer explained to him that, I don't know, obviously his jetpack isn't sentient. 
but for oh. some reason it has like this programming that until he trains you know he has to practice with it she said it will not obey every command of his that's why it took him so long to get up and maneuver around with it he definitely like he knows how to use it but it won't follow his full command like we saw in episode three with some of the other mandalorians yeah okay okay i got yeah. you pretty intense still though like he takes the fighter down and like yeah. just without like using typical blasters or anything he gets on top of it and just like starts you know chopping Sticks away at things bomb, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah uh takes a little detonator and uh takes down the ship uh crashes we don't see moff gideon die but we yeah, no, i think we hear the explosion yeah mm -hmm. i think you're supposed to assume that he'll be back for another fight you know his quest isn't done, or his obsession for Baby Yoda isn't uh, isn't wrapped up just yet, you know. But it was nice. It was a uh, kind of kind of sort of the end of the fight. Uh, Mandalorian, he he knows what he's got to do next. He's been given his quest by the uh, by the blacksmith, and realize he's got to honor the sacrifices of the Ugnaught and of IG Eleven as well, and you know. of the Mandalorians. Yep, that as well. And uh, you know what? It was a it was a banging series. I loved it. Yeah, one of my favorite things at the end, um, I was disappointed <laughs> that some of the characters didn't continue to move along with the Mandalorian, aka Kara. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see her. Obviously, I think we've talked about she's her being confirmed. There for, yeah. yeah, so that's good. But one of the other last interesting things I thought about the end of that episode was we had the flashback where it shows his history and him be being saved um, by the Mandalorians. Um, and at the end, when he is being saved, he is being jetpacked away by one of the yeah. Mandalorians. This was and at the end moment. of this episode, he jetpacks away with the child. So Baby I was like, Yoda, yeah. that's 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 pretty cool. That's a nice little uh, little, right little there, callback. Symbolism. Yeah, imagery, mm -hmm. the map, parallels, like, everything. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Because I noted that when I saw it, I was like, I, I like saw it coming. W once he got the jetpack, I was like, he's going to fly away with the child. I could see it. <laughs> yeah. Fly away. That's going to happen. So it was cool to actually see it. Um, and overall, really, really well put together yeah. episode. Definitely appreciated him uh, taking the time to give a proper burial to Kuil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a nice touch. He paid his respects because he did a lot for him. He really did, you know, helping him get his ship parts back and putting it together. And then even with the child and IG-11, inevitably. Yep. yep. And then the final banter between him and uh, the child is uh, he sees him uh, teething on something. You know, he's chewing on something. And he's got that uh, Mandalorian necklace wrapped around his neck. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I didn't think I'd see this again. Yeah. <laughs> this may be, like, one of my favorite live-action Star Wars media. Like, one of my favorite Oh, yeah, least. by far. Yeah. It triumphs the, the movies for me, even. Same here, for sure. Especially Just the characters and the storytelling. Oh. It was quite good. Even, yeah, the writing, for sure, was uh, high. Is, is muy bueno. Big fan. But uh, you guys have got anything else to wrap up about our first season of The Mandalorian? The plot yeah. twist at the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, not plot twist. You haven't twist, finished Clone yeah. Wars, so you haven't seen it yet, my friend. You're getting there. That uh, TIE fighter of our beloved, or, you know, Moff Gideon, that we assume, you know, crashed and burned and he died along with it, hopefully, starts getting raided by our friends, the Jawas. And then a... I thought it was just like a little knife, you know, like a projectile knife like uh, Din Djarin has that he was just cutting open the thing. It turns out he's alive and he kicks open the side of the TIE fighter and he is holding the dark saber. Yeah, from the yep. uh, from the main uh, leader of the Death Watch, right? Yes, the have... dark saber was, I believe it was constructed by the first Mandalorian Jedi. Yeah, awesome. And it was reclaimed during the Mandalorian War when they took it back they stormed the jedi temple i think back then that no one no one can stop the jedi temple from getting stormed it seems <laughs> but uh, they, they get it back and the funny thing is that saber has been passed around a lot so there's this weird continuity like how did it end up in moff gideon's hands it's been in darth maul's hands it's been in death watch's hands how did it wind up in moff gideon's hands and is din Djarin gonna add that to his collection um, yeah, especially with, uh, his proud, like, Mandalorian past and, uh, how that's, like, a, a Mandalorian relic, I, I feel yes. like that, uh, adds a lot of, a lot of tension and just a lot of conflict between those two characters that already exist, you know? 
I wouldn't be surprised if Moff Gideon was the one that slayed all those Mandalorians, come to think of it. Oh, for sure. I because how implied. else are you going to kill a bunch of dudes who are, like, military trained in Beskar armor <laughs> yeah, I think other than a lightsaber? I think that's definitely implied that the Stormtroopers killed off the uh, Mandalorians there on uh, that planet. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think that's going to be a good wrap for uh, this final episode of the first season. You guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you guys did, please make sure to smash that like button to support the Foundry. Check out some of the links down below. And uh, I just want to give a special thanks to everybody who, you know, who supported the series. This is uh, really fun. We've never done a uh, an episodic review series before, and uh, you guys really supported it. And we kept seeing all the requests for it, and I appreciate you guys sticking with us for the... Uh, couple months it took us to put it out and uh we'll be hopefully be seeing you for season two this is the way yeah. hell yeah bye guys